in the previous discussion, we were again looking at the standard transmission line situation, uh, the DC case, where we just have a DC voltage on an uncharged transmission line. So at t equals zero, this thing turns on. There's a characteristic impedance, Z naught, and then there's a load on the other side. And what we talked about before was uh, we, we looked at how we calculate the initial voltage that's going in. So the voltage that initially goes that way, uh, this is the Z direction, when you turn on the transmission line, when you uh, turn on the, the generator, generator and apply a DC voltage. Uh, one other concept to review really quickly is that if you have this initial voltage going in, the initial current going in, uh, since it's going in the positive Z direction, is just going to be uh, the, the voltage divided by Z naught. And um, one other concept that will come into play right now is that say you have a wave that's going in the negative Z direction, which I'll call V minus, if you wanted to find the corresponding current because of the way current is defined, uh, you not only have to divide it by Z naught, but also do not forget to add the negative sign. So, so you don't just divide by Z naught, you also have to add a negative sign. And that's going to come in later. So we earlier, we, we figured out, we came up with uh, the concept of how with this long transmission line, all you see is this Z naught. So you have the initial V in going in as the voltage divider between ZG and Z naught. So this, for now, next we're going to see what actually happens at the load over here. And uh, what, what we're going to get to is we're, we want to be able to calculate the reflection coefficient. So um, when, when, the lights when the signal is traveling in this characteristic impedance of Z naught, if it comes up with an abrupt change to ZL, that's going to result in, that's going to result in a different voltage that's going across this ZL. And so um, this mismatch means that only part of the energy is actually going to go from the transmission line into the load. And we have conservation of energy since nothing new is adding energy in here. So in order for the universe to not explode, uh, you conserve energy by having the portion that didn't transmit to the load reflect back. So what we want to do eventually get at is we want to have some kind of reflection coefficient, which we'll use, we'll, which we'll call capital gamma. And that is going to relate the initial incoming wave to the corresponding reflected wave that happens. And uh, so, that, so that's, the, that's where we're getting at. And we also want to uh, have what we'll call a transmission coefficient where the voltage at the load, uh, so this voltage at the load here, which is what people ultimately care about, usually what you want to do is to try to get this power over onto the load, is going to be equal to the incoming voltage. So this initial incoming V plus times tau or the transmission coefficient. So the main purpose of this particular skill right now is to be able to know how to calculate gamma and how to calculate tau. And then separately, when we look at the expression for tau, we'll see that there's you can also uh, calculate using an equivalent circuit and you also need to know how to draw that as well. So let's, let's, uh, let's dive in and see what happens when the voltage gets gets over to the other side. So as we described before, there's going to be a, a V plus, a forward propagating voltage that is going to be equal to that initial input voltage. Uh, and just to harken back to what we were talking about before, it's going to be that initial voltage um, with a voltage divider between the source impedance and Z naught. Now, when we get to the load side, if we're just looking over, over here, uh, we we're gonna we will have to uh, apply conservation of energy and come up with some observations as to simple rules that the situation at the load must follow. So the first is that the load voltage is going to be a combination of the wave that's coming in 
and the wave that's reflected because there's nothing else going here. The only two voltages being applied for it are the incoming wave and the reflected wave. And they're going to add together to form your total voltage. The second thing is your current. Now, the current, remember uh, what we just talked about to find the current, all you have to do is just divide by Z naught. However, in the case of the reflected wave, uh, what do you have to do in addition to, div to uh, dividing it by Z naught? That's right. You also have to remember to change the sign or else you'll make me very sad. Uh, next up is uh, the last thing, which is a little bit more subtle, other than the fact that you know the forward and reflected quantities need to add up to the load, is the fact that the load still has to obey Ohm's law. So the current is going to be related to the voltage uh, through the through the a factor of the impedance of the load. So now we have three equations over here, and. Uh, one of the things we can do is uh, plug one into three. So if we plug one into three, uh, then you're gonna get a quantity for IL, which we can then set to be equal to equation two and come with some relationships. So let's plug uh, one into equation three. So that's going to tell us that the low current is going to be equal to V plus over ZL uh, plus V minus over ZL. And this we can then uh, plug into equation two. So if we set these two to be equal and, and solve for V minus, what you're gonna end up getting after some rewriting is that V minus is going to be equal to ZL minus Z naught over ZL plus Z naught times V plus. And if we set this whole thing to be equal to gamma, we now have the relationship of how to relate the reflected voltage to the input voltage uh, through this factor gamma. So you can also simplify this to say that the reflected wave is going to be equal to the reflection coefficient times the incoming wave uh, where gamma is going to be equal to ZL minus Z naught over ZL plus Z naught. And the, the general rule that I use to memorize this is that if you're going from a new, from an old medium, in this case Z naught, to a new medium, which is characterized in this case by ZL, the reflection coefficient, I always just remember uh, new minus old divided by new plus old. So that way, um, if I'm going back to the generator, uh, which we'll talk about later, you're also going to have a reflection uh, between the impedance of Z naught and ZG. And so uh, you can imagine the reflection coefficient, the same rule will still hold. So it's going to be new minus old divided by new plus old. So that, that's kind of the, the mantra that I use to remember what's going on. Now, the other thing we can do um, is we can also calculate the reflected current. So the reflected current is going to be equal to V minus over Z naught, except what do you have to do to not make me sad? Don't forget that minus sign. So using this relationship, you can also uh, come up with that the, that the current is just going to be gamma voltage divided by current. So basically you're, you're still multiplying it by gamma and then moving on. And then you can substitute uh, these quantities back into equation one to find what the load is. So VL is going to be equal to uh, V plus plus V minus. So V plus plus, and remember uh, the reflected wave is gamma V plus, which is going to be equal to one plus gamma V plus. And this is going to be our transmission coefficient. So you can now relate this load. Uh, you can now figure out what the load voltage is relative to the incoming wave through this quantity, this 
tau here, where tau is simply 1 plus gamma. Now, there's a few things that I, I want us to think about while we step back and look at this result. Um, the first thing is that uh, if you if you look at gamma, gamma is uh, if you if you work through the numbers, you're going to see that gamma is always going to be uh, between one and minus one, uh, depending on uh, whether whether ZL is going to be an open or short. If ZL is a short is a short, then it's going to be equal to zero, and you're going to get the minus one. So if it's a short, you're going to get a minus one. Uh, if it's open, then uh, you take the limit. The ZL terms would dominate, so you have ZL over ZL. So you're going to get you're going to get a one. And so if in the case of gamma equals to one, uh, you see that the the load voltage is going to be one plus one. Uh, the in incoming voltage. So it's actually going to be 2V plus, which might be seem a little counterintuitive. It sounds like if you put in some kind of voltage, you're going to get uh, double the voltage being applied to the load. But one important thing to note is that when you look at the current, the current is going to be the difference between the two voltages. So in the situation where this is an open circuit, uh, you're going to have, in, you know, in this case, eventually, you know, no current going in. So then even though the voltage is really high, is higher, the current is actually going to be lower. So you still have conservation of energy. The other concept that I want to bring up is, uh, what, is uh, wh what happens if we actually stick in the impedance values in here? What does that what does that tell us about the relationship between the load voltage? I'll, I'll just do this part of the discussion in a different color. But what happens if you just look at this corner here, if you, if you plug in the values for gamma in terms of impedance, you'll find that the load voltage is going to be equal to, again, one plus gamma, the incoming voltage. And if you write that out, that's going to be equal to one plus uh, new minus old over new plus old V plus, which is going to be equal to uh, ZL plus Z naught plus ZL minus Z naught all over ZL plus Z naught times V plus. Uh, the z knots cancel each other out, so this should be a knot. So these cancel out, and you're going to be left with 2zl over zl plus z naught v plus. And uh, you can write this a different way. Let's just put the 2 and the v plus together zl over zl plus z naught. So you can say, uh, if you look at this equation in terms of how it looks, this actually looks like uh, a voltage divider where the input voltage is twice a V plus. So uh, one equivalent way for you to look at it if, is if you have this V plus coming in and then you have this load and you want to know you want to know what's, what's V load. Um, one equivalent way that you can draw this circuit is if you have an input, if you have an, an input DC source that's equal to 2V plus, and then you do a voltage divider between Z naught, where Z naught is the, is the transmission line characteristic impedance, but in this case, it looks like the, the source impedance, ZL, and then if you just do the voltage divider that way, that's going to be your VL. So VL is going to be equal to the to be a voltage divider of this circuit here, where the source voltage is 2V plus and the source impedance is Z naught 
and the and the load is the load impedance is ZL. So this is this is this is called uh, this is the Thevenin equivalent or an equivalent circuit to view it. And so that that's a concept that we'll use later on. But it's just uh, when when we do come across it and talk about it more, just remember it's just a repackaging of what this uh, relationship between the load and the incoming voltage looks like.